Hello, hello. This is Jen with Jen's Den Art, and we are here today to paint with all of you. Say hello when you get here. I am so excited to be here in Yvette's group, and I want to thank Yvette for having me be a part of her live. I'm trying to get my reference photo here. So I have it to look at. So say hello, say hello. I would love to say hello back. Hello, Tina from Florida. First thing I'm going to ask is, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Am I echoing? Yes, such a fun surprise today. So I don't normally come live on the weekends. So all right, Yvette, thank you so much. So glad to be here. We are painting today. Let me say hi to some people. Hello, Cheryl. Cindy says the sound is perfect, so I'm excited about that. Hello, hello. Hello, Judy and Donna. Oh, you're so sweet. From Mississippi, from North Carolina. Yay. Hi, Judy. Hi, Carla. I don't see StreamYard, so I don't know if you can see my name. I can see your name, Stacy. <laughs> we are good to go. Hello, hello. Hello, Miss Pat from New York. Glad you're here. So let me just give you a little introduction first before um, we get started. My name is Ginger LaCour. I am a retired high school math teacher turned artist about six years ago. And I now have an online acrylic painting membership where we paint live weekly in our private Facebook group. And you get the fun um, bonus painting today that we are doing that um, is actually like a practice painting for an event that I have coming up. So um, I want to show you what the event is first, and then we'll actually do the practice painting. We're going to paint a cute little bunny. But I want to just make sure you know my bunnies are not cartoonish bunnies. Like we're actually going to paint this, and it's going to be more of an adult-like painting. Okay, so we're going to use a little bit of uh, palette knives. We're going to use paint brushes, and we're going to use a number of different types of acrylic paints. Um, most of the paints that I use are the artist grade paints, but you don't have to use the artist grade paints. You can paint this with craft paints in the little bottles. You just may have to put more layers because your craft paints just don't have the, um, the opacity and the color vibrance that um, your professional grade paints do. So don't let that stop you from doing this. And I am gonna take you step by step through on how to do this. Hey, Carlene, I'm from Louisiana too. Originally, I'm from Louisiana. Right now, we are living in the mountains of Montana. Um, for a couple of years, we have decided to take a little adventure in our lives. And we're in the mountains right now, so. Hello, everyone. So glad you're here. California transplant from Mississippi. Well, I'm a Montana transplant from Louisiana. So I love it, Kelly. That's nice. Hello, Miss Faye. So glad you're here as well. So we have this pop-up paint party. This is what we're going to be doing. It's a porch leaner. And it's super big and it's super fun. So we're going to be painting this in a private Facebook group. You do not have to be a member of my, um, my membership. My membership is $35 a month. And you get this painting for free if you are a member. But if you are not a member and you just want to come paint with us, and by the way, it's reversible. We have a spring and summer side. Um, if you want to come paint this with us, it is $15 just to paint with us for four days. And you can paint with us and get to know our tribe members and all of the other, I say members because, you know, we're, we don't pronounce our ERs in Louisiana. So this is our spring side and this is our summer side. And it's basically, a, it's a 36 inch, 
inch porch leaner and we're going to paint this together for four days. So um, what we're doing today is um, anytime I do a pop up paint party, um, you know, my paintings are a little more adult like. So I like to give you the opportunity to have some practice um, paintings to help build you up to something this large because this is a pretty large painting. So what we're doing today is we're going to focus on the bunny. The bunny that I have here is very similar to the bunny that we're going to be painting. You see the, the outline of him is very similar. This bunny that I have on this um, pop-up paint party is more of a palette knife bunny, but we're going to do both. We're going to work with a, with a paintbrush and we're going to do the flowers as well. Okay, we're going to add some flowers. So this whole bottom side of this pop-up paint party is going to be practiced on and we're going to create something very similar to it today so that it will help you build up your confidence level to be able to create this entire piece as one beautiful piece. And guess what else I am doing for this pop-up paint party? I am learning how to resin Okay, I'm learning how to resin because this is wood and I want to protect this because you can decorate your front porch with this. Okay, so in order for you, if you want to put this out on your porch, I would definitely put it under a covered porch. Um, I want to protect it with a really strong sealer. So I am going to resin this. It's going to be a bonus tutorial in the pop-up paint party. We are going to resin this and we're going to seal it with resin. Ooh, I'm excited about it. So anyway, yeah, that's just a little bonus piece that I don't think y'all really knew that I was going to do, right? But I am going to share that with you. All right. Oh, good, Miss Ellen. I'm so glad you're here. Congratulations. Miss Ellen is our tribe sister of the month in our tribe. So we want to have a big shout out to her today for um, being here and being a supporter for everything that we do. And now we're going to get started. So I am working on an eight by 10. And by the way, in the comments, if you want this template, if you want this template, there is an, there's a link where you can sign up to get this template sent to you. Um, and it is for an eight by 10 um, painting. Okay. It's for an eight by 10 painting. This eight by 10 is just a canvas board. You can use regular canvas. You can use wood. I love to paint on wood. I just want to share that with you. So hello, I have other handy inside screen door would be nice to, oh, that is so awesome. Yes. So we're going to learn how to resin this board. Are y'all super excited about that? I know I am. I went to um, Hobby Lobby yesterday and I bought all of the materials that I need. And I have three of these boards already painted. I have two from the fall and, um, the fall and winter. We did one for the fall and the, the Christmas time. Uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, basically. We did one then called Home for the Holidays. And I have two of those already. And then I'm going to have two of these. And so I'm going to practice on some of those other ones to um, to start, start resonating some of my pieces. I think it's going to make a huge difference. I've been told... I'm just cutting this down a little bit so I can tape it. I've been told that resin really adds a nice pop to your uh, to your paintings. I'm going to come down just a little bit and I'm going to talk about what I'm doing. I'm transferring this template onto my canvas. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing. I, I talk a lot during my tutorials. And not about random things, although sometimes we do. I talk a lot about what I'm doing and what's going on in my head as I'm doing it. Okay, so be prepared to listen to a lot of um, <laughs> teaching information. All right, so what I'm doing here is I do not want my bunny to be directly in the center. 
I want to use the third rules. I want to um, think about if you learned anything in school about photography or art or anything like that, if you've ever taken any art classes, you know that um, your subject is always more pleasing to the eye. And I do not have an art degree. I'm a self-taught artist. So the words I use may not be the appropriate words for everything, but you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. So if you break your canvas up in thirds and um, I take this bunny, this is going to be my focal point. I want him to be more on this side. I want him to be more on this side, kind of like off to the side. I do not want him in the center. It's just not as pleasing to the eye. And it, it's, um, it does not make a very good focal point. So I'm going to move him over to um, the thirds. And I'm moving him over to the left side because he's looking to the right. He's looking to our right. So it would not be very appropriate if I put him here and then, you know, all of this area behind him or her. It could be her. We can make it a her if y'all want to add little bunny flowers or something. Um, this wouldn't be appropriate because everything back here would be what you would have to fill in. And then the bunny would just be kind of like in the way. OK, so we want to make sure that the direction that the bunny is facing is where there's more stuff on the canvas. OK, so that's just a food for thought there. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of carbon paper and I'm going to put it underneath. How many of you are familiar with tracing and transferring your um, your template over? The template. OK, Cindy just put the template in the comments and Cindy, you should be able to um, you can possibly pin it to the top. If I'm not mistaken, you should be able to pin it to the top. If not, I'll have to maybe go in and see if I can do it for you. Just let me know if you can do it. OK, um, we're going to take a pin. Just a regular pin, just a regular pin, and I'm just going to trace over this really fast. So have y'all been enjoying, have you been watching any of the other tutorials today? Let me know. I would love to know um, if you have watched any of them in the group. All right, so let's get him traced up. You don't have to be perfect. You know what? I forgot his little tail. I don't know if he had a tail in the picture. I'm going to have to look. We might have to add him a tail. Okay, so there we go. He looks kind of like he's facing down, but we can fix that really easy. I think I was a little, I think I was a little off, but that's okay. All we have to do is just kind of make this area come down a little bit more and then he'll be flat. Okay, so there's our rabbit. And I am done with my template. Now, if you are familiar with um, block poster, block posters, it's called block posters. Hey, Miss Sharon, how are you today? Um, block posters is a website, blockposters.com. It will allow you to um, to drop your your JPEG, like your picture, into their website, and it will allow you to make all different sizes of uh, templates for free, and then you download it as a PDF. So blockposters.com is a great tool if you want to paint something um, and use a template in a, you know, a larger scale. So yes, he is going to be a very cute bunny. OK, so I am going to um, I'm going to go pull up my my template. I mean, not my template, my uh, my reference photo. OK, so the reference photo, y'all, is not exactly what we are painting. And I'll, I'll explain it to you. Let me see if I can find it on here. I'm using it as a guide 
for different reasons than the actual photograph. So let's see. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here he is. Okay. So I like, I like the model. Okay. I like the way he's showing up in this picture. I like the eyes. I like the shading. Okay. But we're going to make him, we're only going to use him for basically, um, um, I don't really even know the words for it, but it's the darker colors and the lighter colors. Okay. So where are the darker colors and the lighter colors going to be on the rabbit? So when we're looking at, at him, I know that I want all of this, you know, this is all going to be lighter. And then, um, you know, around the nose, you've got a little bit of light color. I don't really care for the gray color of him. I kind of want him to be a little bit more um, maybe like black and white. So we we might change the colors a little bit. But for the most part, it's still going to look like this rabbit. It's just going to have different colors. But the shading is what we're really focusing on here. See how this ear is a lot lighter than this ear back here. So all of those little little things about this picture is what we're going to use to help us paint this one here. And then we're just going to add our own background. We're going to add flowers, maybe some sunflowers would be fun, some yellow flowers um, and a little bit of grass. I'm not really crazy about the dark brown grass. OK, it's just a really plain painting uh, or colors. The colors are and I want to add some pop to it. I want to add some pop to it. So that's basically what I wanted to share with you here. That's why we're using this reference photo. So I'm going to do something a little bit different on this one. I am going to start, I usually start on the background first and then I work my way to the front. But I'm going to start, because we have so many layers to put on, I'm going to start putting my first layer to my bunny and I'm going to let it dry before I go on. And so it'll give me some time. Then after I put the first layer of the bunny, I'm going to start going to the background and then I'm going to kind of work back and forth so that I have enough time for things to dry and then dry and then dry and so forth and so on. So are y'all OK with that? Does that make sense? He's sitting on his tail. Miss Faye says he's sitting on his tail. I love it. He might be. He sure does look like he is, huh? But we might have to add him a little tail because it would be so cute if we did. All right, so my first color is a tan, and it is called Unbleached Titanium. And I'm going to start focusing on just that first layer. And I think I'm just going to grab um, a filbert brush. A filbert brush should do the job. This is the first layer, so nothing special is happening. I wet the paintbrush by throwing it in the water, getting my bristles nice and nice and movable and then i'm wiping the paintbrush off just to get most of that water out of it and then i'm gonna start and i'm just gonna put a layer of i'm working with a really large brush y'all because this is a first layer so a first layer is always um you know there's really no detail going on here it's just a good a good background for everything. Okay, I could have gone with a darker brown and I'm going to use a variety of different colors in here, but this just seemed like a good color to start with. So, I paint fast. The reason why I paint fast and I paint with larger than normal paint brushes two reasons I do that. One, well, actually one reason I do that. I like my favorite style is impressionism. And so I am not going for detail as much as I am for just the loose, messy look. Okay. So that will give you some idea of why I'm doing what I'm doing. All right, so that's gonna be my first layer. 
so far so good. I need, I need to think about what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to keep the background. I don't want a lot of stuff going on with the background. So I'm going to try to keep the background pretty, pretty calm, except I'm going to do a few flowers. So by keeping it pretty calm, I'm going to go with some greens and um, let me think. I'm going to let me get some white going on here. I'm going to try to keep it really, really muted. Here's my black. I don't know what I did with my white. Hang on one sec. Oh, there it is. Okay. A little tail poof would be super cute. <laughs> All right. So I've got some white and I've got some dark green. I think I want to go with a little bit of a graphite color. You can use black, but you know what? I just bought this the other day and I want to try it. It almost looks metallic. Iridescent. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I don't want to use iridescent. I didn't realize it's <laughs> iridescent on it. We're going to try it anyway and see what happens. Mm, it's very transparent. I do notice that. Let's see what's going to happen. So I'm mixing. Can y'all see what I'm doing? I'm a mixer. I love mixing colors together and creating new colors that are hard to duplicate. To me, that's what makes an artist an artist is you can you can kind of like find that artist by the colors that they use on their paintings because they seem to use like the same. I know I'm catching myself doing that. I seem to use like the same color palette a lot and you start kind of like identifying yourself through your color palettes that you end up using. I just find that's really interesting. And and not on purpose. Just it just happens. It just starts happening. So, I'm just going with like some gray and some green and some white. And my green by the way is a sap green. It's kind of like a hooker's green if you've ever used that that color. I'm going to turn, turn her. Have we decided if this is going to be a male or a female? Anybody? And I'm still using the Filbert brush, y'all. I'm a very free paintbrush painter. I don't really have to have a particular paintbrush. Just kind of works. You just kind of make it work. Whatever you have in stock. You just make it work because we're not we're not being really particular. And here's a little trick that we're going to do because I don't I don't like it to be clean. Let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to take a paper towel, just a regular old paper towel. I'm going to bundle it up on the end and I'm going to throw it in the in the water. I just wet the end of it. I'm going to wet it just a little bit more and I'm going to kind of move this paint around just a little bit more. I started this technique just recently and I love it. It's so much easier to add that color. I'm just trying to make the background like maybe there's a bunch of like maybe there's a forest back there or something and and this little rabbit came out of the forest and we just have like a really blurred vision of that background area. So this is just another technique. Um to work with your background. I'm still just using the same colors, y'all. Just sometimes I use a little bit more green. 
Sometimes I use a little bit more white, but it doesn't really matter. You just kind of get it all splotchy back there. And all of the paints I'm using or um, the brands that I'm using are a variety. Most of the stuff I use is like your Liquitex Basics and um, in the tubes. And then I also use um, Golden. I don't have any golden out here. Most of my most of my stuff in front of me is Liquitex. So y'all let me know if you have any questions about anything I'm doing. And if you are interested in joining us in our pop-up paint party, the link is, um, is above in the description. And it starts March 22nd, if you were wondering. It starts March 22nd, and it's for four days at um, 5 p.m. Central Time every night. My goal is to be a loose painter. I love that style. I just can't seem to get... Okay, so here's some tricks about being a loose painter. First of all, this, these are, um, I know I have a, um, I have a blog post about the five tips about being, you know, helping you to become a loose painter. One of them, I don't remember them right offhand, but I know one of them is paint fast. Another one is um, use a larger paintbrush than, I'm just trying to make some extra movement back here. Um, use a larger paintbrush than what you would normally think you need to use. Okay. I'm going to a little bit more green, just a little bit. And then I'm going to add some of this. Fingers are great to paint with as well. See how fast I'm moving? You just gotta like let it do you know just like I do not have a design in my mind I'm making this up as I go you know so that is another it's another good trick just kind of let it happen just don't don't plan it that's a that's a big part of painting loose don't plan it okay so a, a paper towel is not the best thing to use because it kind of kind of comes off you know, if you use it too much. Um, and my husband told me I need to start using shop towels. Somebody else in the group had asked, maybe I should start using shop towels and they won't, won't come off as much. Okay, so I know our Easter Bunny is kind of covered up, but you can always take your template and retrace it if you have to. I'm not gonna do that, I can pretty much tell where everything is still located on him but that is oh sorry y'all can't see that well can you that is part of our process <laughs> kathy says so much easier said than done practice you know how you become a better painter you paint and you paint again and you paint again and did i mention you paint again <laughs> That is how you become a better painter. More and more paint. That's all you have to do. All right, so I'm going to throw out a palette knife and I'm going to have a little bit of fun. Okay. And this is what I'm doing. I'm kind of squinting my eyes and I'm looking at my rabbit. And I'm breaking this up into three different shades of colors dark, medium, and light. Okay, so your dark colors are basically your, your darker shades. Your mediums are, you can kind of see where the mediums are there in the middle. And then your lights are like where the white and the light tan is and around the eyes and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm breaking that up into my mind and I kind of squint. The reason why I squint is because 
I don't want to focus on every single hair on this on this bunny. I want to just focus on the colors. So, and by colors, I said the wrong word, the shades, okay, the hues. Um, so maybe if you print this out in black and white, it would help you even more. Because if you print it out in black and white, you're just going to see the darker grays, the lighter grays, the whites, the blacks, and that's it. And so that's the only thing that we want to see right now. So I'm going to play around a little bit with a palette knife just because I just want you to see what you can do with a palette knife. And I really want to focus on where those, um, you see I went too far right here. His chest doesn't come out that far with that palette knife. And that's okay. We're going to fix this because we're going to have flowers around here. So, so I'm just going to let you see what you can do with a palette knife. Notice how I'm holding it. I'm not holding it like this, like I'm eating or like I'm writing. I'm holding it like this, like it's flat in my hand. And I'm just starting to add some of those lighter shades in those those areas where I see that lighter color. And I'm using a palette knife because I want my painting to be really loose. And so the palette knife is going to help me do that. And the next thing I want you to start noticing is I'm going to take my paintbrush now. I'm going to take a smaller paintbrush like a, um, a flat or a filbert, either one will be fine. Something like this, about this size, because I'm on an eight by 10, I'm on a kind of a small area. I'm gonna take a little bit of this darker brown, which is a burnt umber, and I'm going to um, calm it down with some white. And I'm gonna start painting in the same direction as the fur. So my strokes are going to follow the same direction as the fur. And I'm kind of going a little bit more on the brown side than I want. I want him to be a little bit more on the gray. So I'm going to add just a teeny bit of black on my palette and I dipped my paintbrush in the water but I put too much so I'm going to take a little bit off and I'm kind of making like a grayish brown and I want you to notice again when you look at that reference photo look at his back it's really dark okay his back is really dark so that area right there is going to have a darker color. Okay, and then, hey boo, hey, then the middle part, my husband is coming in right now. Hey guys. He usually helps me with some lives. His name is Michael. My name is Michael. I help with lives. <laughs> He's been outside working on the tractor. Got it, got it fixed. That's awesome. So now I'm kind of working like in the middle of the rabbit. And I'm going with a little bit more on the gray side. So I'm, I'm working with what I call mid-tones. We are on Jen's Den Art. I think I got it. I am... Uh, getting smarter. 108 people on right now, Jen. Oh, that's so awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Michael yes. is going to help me with the comments, y'all. If I've been missing comments, Cindy's got the links for me. Michael's now going to help me with the comments. So right. thank you very much for being here. Hey, Sharon Daigle. Long time no see, Sharon. It's so wonderful to see you right now. Hello, Francisco and Kathy and Allison. Hey, Cindy and Elizabeth and Pat and Sandy. <laughs> Everyone. 
So my tractor tire came off my left front tractor, off my left front rim. And so I uh, wrapped a strap around it and put some Dawn soap on it and aired it up and bada bing, bada boom. I know everyone was dying to hear that. <laughs> I'm like, did somebody ask? Nobody or did asked, you just decide to tell them what you but were doing? I have doing? a feeling. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon said, I'm looking. Oh, no, the rabbit is looking so cute. Oh. Okay. <laughs> right. Sharon, right. he probably thought you said he was looking so cute. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so you see how I'm working here? I've got dark colors, medium tones, and light tones. And I'm going to gradually just keep on going back over. I'm using a filbert brush. And I'm going to blend these three different areas together as I'm going. And as I'm doing that, I'm also going to start filling in some of my rabbit up here as well. Thank you, Pat. I was pretty excited, Pat, to be honest. What? The, getting the tractor Getting fixed. the tire yeah. done. It's yeah, cold. me my too. My hands are freezing. How many of y'all are still in snow? We are still in snow here, like deep snow. You ain't lying, Allison. So notice I'm just basically following the... Um, yes, Leah. I'm just following all of the curves. Now this ear is a lot lighter, so I'm going to grab some more white. Pat's in a major snowstorm. Oh, in New York? Yes. I did see that. Question, I'm working through identifying shades or values. I'm having to work at it. I kind of thought it would come more easily. Am I just slow at it, learning? What's the deal with that? About identifying shades or values. Um, can you give me a name of somebody? That's... Yeah, so that was Lisa Goodnight. Okay, Lisa, um, everybody's going to be different. Some people, it's going to come really naturally, and it's just it's just going to be an innate, just like anything else, just like if you were learn if you were trying to learn how to sing or you know any any type of of creative, any type of art. Um, some people can pick up playing music really fast, and some people have to work a lot harder at it. So um, maybe that's the uh, maybe that's the situation. Maybe um, you just you know you just have to work a little harder at it. And maybe that because Lisa, if I'm not mistaken, you're in the tribe. You're still in the tribe, if I'm not mistaken. And um, that maybe that is something that we can um, we can spend more time on, and I can share more information with all of you because. That comes really easy to me. And if I can communicate my um, technique my technique with you better, then I can help you better. So, Jen, that sounds like a good thing to do on technique, New Technique Wednesday. Yes. Right? So, every Wednesday, I come on live on, my, on the page that I'm on now. Every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central. I come on live and I, I I call it New Technique Wednesday and it is free to anyone and we do different types of techniques. We um, we do watercolor. I just started doing watercolor, by the way, and I'm loving it. And she loves it. That's um, all she talks about. Yes. Um, we do. Um, we, we use molding paste. Like we try different things beyond just an acrylic painting. And so it's called New Technique Wednesday. And um, I usually just kind of listen to what my people want and I go with it. Like one of the things I'm going to do is learn how to resin our our acrylic paintings. Um, we're going to do more gold leaf, you know, like adding gold leaf to your acrylic, like going beyond the level of just an acrylic painting. OK, so um, that's what I call New Technique Wednesdays. And it is open to the public, and um, but I'm going to be doing even more of that kind of stuff inside the tribe as well. So that's definitely something that I would add to our tribe 
techniques, you Lisa know. Lisa is down with that. Yeah. Kathy says learning to shade and highlight is a challenge for her too. Mm -hmm. uh, I put that on your Facebook survey on things to paint this week. Think, okay. Said, yes. I asked. Yeah. I asked what, what new techniques do y'all want to learn? That's right. And a lot of y'all said the shading and the highlighting and stuff is something that y'all want work with. So that um, that's definitely something that we will add to our um, tutorials. I can't wait to do that. I love, I love teaching. Teaching is my purpose. I used to teach through math. <laughs> we would do math every day for eight hours a day in high school. And now I am teaching um, painting and I love it even more than math. Can you believe that? Who would love painting more than math, especially trigonometry? I, mean, I would love a trip to the dentist's office. <coughs> Excuse me. I would love a trip to the dentist's office more than that. <laughs> I'm looking for my other paintbrush that I. So, Jen, there's a lot of people that want to learn about shading and crafting. And Jackie says you are a great teacher, too. I love it. I That is definitely God has given me that purpose. I knew I wanted to be a teacher since I was about 16 years old. And I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. And um, it's, it was just something that was, um, it just came easy to me. And yeah. <laughs> Kathy's on board with me. Kathy Cunningham. Get okay. this office more than math. No, math is awesome, y'all. I'm painting his eye just mm -hmm. really, I'm just going with solid black and I'm just making his eye come out. So I don't know if Jen told you guys, but um, Jen, did, well, I'll let you do it, Jen. Did you tell him how often you go live? Yes, okay. about the new technique Wednesday. More than just And that. then I told him about the pop up paint party Great. coming up. And just kind of since I'm in the black, I'm just looking. Okay, so I want you to see what I'm looking at here. I'm focusing on this rabbit and he's helping me a lot. Do y'all see all those little dark areas around his eye? So I'm trying to keep this open so that I can point, but I can't do both at the same time. So you sent you 50 stars. Oh, you are so sweet. So see right here, this little bit of darker color, and then it's a little bit darker up here. And and all of these little darker shades right around here. All of that is is like I'm really, I'm really honing in on that right now. And I'm gonna grab a paintbrush that's gonna that's gonna be kind of small. This is a little bit too small. Yeah, go is ahead. Your paintbrush bent. Yes, that one was. Isn't that cool? What did I just do with it? Yes, this one is. Look at that. Isn't it cool? I don't use it very often. I only use it for like little bitty teeny things. It is a Master's Touch Tight Spot Detailer. It's a number zero and it's just it just makes it easier to get into those little. Yeah. Pat Sugar says hello. Hi, Pat Sugar. Oh, uh, <laughs> I thought you meant there was somebody on named Pat Sugar. <laughs> Pat, Pat, Pat says hello to Sugar. <laughs> Stacy Bowen, by the way, gave a great comment. <laughs> she said, look up how to create a grayscale. On the left is white, all the way to the right is black. Then shades of gray, gradually lighter, darker mm -hmm. from one end to the other. That will help you with values. Mm -hmm. Very good comment. Who gave that? That was... That was Stacy Bowen. St Thank you, Stacy. Stacy is is a wealth of knowledge in our group. She knows a lot about painting, and I really appreciate that because you know we can all learn from each other. So, Stacy, have you been painting for a while? Tell me how long y'all have been I painting. See. I'm working around these lighter colors in here, y'all. Tell me, tell me. I want to know. Oh, Michael's going to tell me what y'all say. I will. I'll interrupt you while you're speaking to tell you what they say. And then I'll get the look. 
No, it's all good. I know, Mama. I'm really happy about that tractor tire. <laughs> what? Allison says you almost spit her tea out on that one. <laughs> you saying, hey, Pat Sugar. Hey, Pat Sugar. <laughs> oh, Stacy Bowen said, oh, thank you. And I'm a retired teacher since September. Most recently, but about 30 years ago, learned watercolors. Fantastic. Stacy, what did you retire in? What kind of teaching? Congratulations on your retirement, by the way. Kathy Hill, three months with us. Congratulations, three months. Woohoo. Marty Trivet has been painting for two years. Oh, that's a lot. That's hey, good. Katie Euler. And have you noticed? Um, I want to know. How long you've been painting and if you have noticed uh, um, how you've gotten better. Susie's been painting for three. Allison for about two. Michelle, two. Stacy Bowen taught high school English. Now I'm scared to talk and type. Stacy, Yeah, I'm in trouble too, Stacy. High school English and I didn't really get along. Stacey it was actually at the college level. Oh, I taught at the college level too. Did you teach the dual enrollment classes like I did? That's awesome. Yeah, but I have to say my second best um, subject was English. I do have to say that. But I'm, I still wasn't good at it. I was just good at math and really nothing else. So here's a great comment. Kathy Miller's been painting since the Acrylic 101 class. Ooh. <laughs> I love it. Isn't it awesome, Kathy? Teresa has been painting ever since she started with you. <gasps> Teresa, that's so exciting. Mm, great comment, Kathy. Kathy Cunningham says, I've always wanted to paint, but I decided to do it when the pandemic started. Join the tribe because I love it. Definitely can see improvement, and it's so rewarding. I needed it. Oh, that is so awesome. Teresa, 22 years painting. <gasps> Teresa, you can teach us some stuff, my friend. I've only been, I've been painting since 2016. So how long is that? Six years? Yeah. It's fine if you started in March. I started at the beginning of 2016. So yeah. Painting 18 months. 18 months. That's good. And you're still loving it. I love that. You can see so much improvement. I know I can see improvement in my work and I'm still learning a lot. Like there's so much to learn. And I still think, Teresa, you could probably tell us, you said you've been painting for what, 20 years or something. I still think you're always learning. Like there's always room for improvement, you know? Curry Thrifthauser, on and off for two and a half years since I met you, Scarecrow pop-up paint party was my First. I remember you, Curry. Yeah, I remember when you started. I do too. Yes. Carly's been painting for 18 months. Oh, great. Doris since COVID. She, she has learned so much as a mini triber. Oh, that's so good. Doris Watts. Is that who that is? It is Doris Watts. Yeah. See, I know my people. Jean I know my people. <laughs> She's been painting for five months. Cindy. Since COVID started for her. Cindy Franklin? Yeah. Or Cindy Lou. Cindy Lou. <laughs> Patricia Walker started in oils painting, oil painting, excuse me, in 1986. Oh, wow. I have never done, um, I've never done oils. I'm scared of all of the, Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. This is why I don't do glass and resin and crafting and all that kind of stuff. I'm scared of all of the stuff you have to have to do it. Like, you have to buy, like, special stuff for your paints to mix your paints. And you have to have special um, cups. And you have to wash them out. And that's a lot of stuff. I don't, I just like water and paint and something to paint on. I'm done. Acrylics. <laughs> I think that's why I like watercolor too, because you can do the same thing. Just water, paints. 
Patty Gross. I started last September in the free 31 day class that you all. Oh, have. yay. I need to do that again. That was yeah, so that much was, fun. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Okay. So I'm going to, I know I'm getting kind of a little carried away. Do y'all see how you can see all the different shades? He's coming out so cute. I'm getting a little carried away though. I'm going a little bit too much into detail. So I'm just going to, I'm going to start finishing him up. Very loose. Finishing him up. I'm trying to blend in this white that I have here with a little bit of this brown. And I'm going to add just a little bit more color on my paintbrush. Pat Harwell took my first art lesson at the age of 10. I'll be 70 in May. Oh, Miss Pat. And you've been with us for a while. You've been painting in the tribe for a while. What is your favorite thing about the tribe, my tribe sisters? I want to know. And don't say Michael. <laughs> They're not going to say that. Don't worry. <laughs> well, and, and don't say we like it when Michael doesn't talk. <laughs> I've actually had somebody say uh, that before a, lot, more a few one. times. More than one. Michael yeah. needs to stop talking. Yeah, I know. It's okay. No, no. It didn't stop me. No. <laughs> Vicki asked, Jen, will this be available for replay? Yes, ma'am. It will. It's going to stay up on my page. And if you're on my email list, I'm going to email it out to y'all. Anytime I do a free painting, I email it out weekly. I'm pushing it, Wilson. So free paintings and free technique Wednesdays are emailed out to you weekly after the replay, um, after the live. So if you're on my email list, you can get on my email list by um, going to get the template opt in to get the, the bunny template that we're painting today. You can get on my email list that way. If you're not already on there, the sense of community, the sense, the sense of community and support, camaraderie, Ginger's teaching. Elizabeth's husband says me. <laughs> <laughs> Fellowship. Yeah, the husbands get involved in this group as well. So just want to let y'all know. This is so much fun. So look, if you're not a, if you're not a member of the tribe. And, I, and Ginger's not as outspoken, and not that that's a negative about what I'm about to say. This tribe is for self-improvement, emotional, mental, spiritual self-improvement. In the process, you get to have fun painting. We, we are not bashful about our love for God, for Jesus Christ. We're not bashful about our attention that we want to place upon one another and pray and have fellowship and praise. And so that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a prayer group that's right. um, where you can, you can ask for prayers in our group as well. When okay. You, one more question. When you start using foil on the projects, would it matter if you don't use foil? Just curious. Foil. What do you mean? Goal leaf? Is that what you mean? The gold leaf stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. You'll be able to complete the painting even if you don't do so that I have one painting that I've actually done with y'all that I used gold leaf on. Baby, in the bathroom, the trees, you know which one I'm talking about? Yep. He's going to go get it. Look how cute he came out. I'm not going to go any more particular, but isn't he cute? I'm really liking him. Okay, we're going to kind of cover him up a little bit with some with this is where we're going to have fun. Oh, this is the fun part. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to change the background and we're going to add some um, like, you know, over here. Do you, can y'all see this? This is what we're going to do. No, is it not in there no. on the other wall by the commode? Um, you see all of these, like all of this, all this grass and these flowers and stuff. We're going to have fun with that. Okay. And we might make his little ear a little more pinkish. You think that would be cute? 
I love it. He's adorable. Isn't he so cute? Descriptions Jan's give during the class. Y'all are super awesome. I love y'all so much. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. I'm taking my palette knife and I'm putting, I'm just using a plastic palette knife right now. Put in some paint on the back of it. This is a, um, this is a green, a dark green. Okay, and I'm just going to pull up in different directions. I'm just going to pull up. It's not there. Okay, don't worry about it. It's probably in that extra bedroom. So there was there's a painting that I've done. It's actually my uh, cover page of my Facebook right now. There's a painting that we've done that is um, it's trees on a lake, and I took in the trees. I put some gold leaf in the trees just for a little sparkle, and it came out really cute. Okay, so right here, I'm not going to go really high with the with the grass. And I'm, I'm not using the entire palette knife flat. I'm using the corner of the palette knife. Okay, just the corner. It's okay. And I'm just kind of adding some. Now back here, let me add some green. Here's a green I'm going to add, this light olive. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to mix the two colors together. Look at that, how pretty. Oh, Debbie Darby, that was sweet. I miss being a part of Jim's group. Miss all you guys. Oh, Miss Debbie, we love you. Encouragement and descriptions Jim gives during classes. Swoosh scrubbing. This is fun. Swoosh. <laughs> Don't forget to swoosh. Encourage. Swoosh. Boy. There it is. <laughs> we always do swooshing. Where's Sometimes we get up and swoosh. <laughs> Where's the tail? Oh, we're going to add a tail in just a minute. Good catch, Patricia Walker. Patricia is on point today. I love it. Okay, so I'm mixing a little bit of white, a little bit of green. I'm having some fun with different shades. And what you're going to find, see now that shade is too close to the same color as the background. I do not want to have the same color as the background because it's not going to show. So you need to make sure you're using like a darker, darker shade. Debbie Darby signed up for the learner class, class last week. The learner class. Yeah, I signed up for the learner class last week. See y'all there. Oh, I thought that was something. The leaner. The leaner. leaner. She did put the leaner. leaner. The she spring did. and yeah, I'm like, she put learner. leaner. I said learner. I said maybe somebody else out there on the internet no, is Debbie, having a learner Debbie class. Said, Debbie said leaner. <laughs> Melanie Moore will paint for the first time since Christmas. Wow. Yay, Melanie. Melanie, Melanie that's great. Especially yes. with all of the struggles you've been going through lately. Yes. We are here for you, girl. Hang in there. Sharon Dago. Oh, how fun. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with the grass. Now we're going to have some more fun. We're going to take some yellow. Y'all think yellow? Yellow looks like it's going to do well, huh? Let's take our color wheel out and let's talk for a second. We've got a beautiful painting happening here. I hope y'all are liking it as much as I am. And we've got... Yes, Kim Cole, mm. this will be on replay. Yes, it will. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we can do yellow. The yellow, uh, what I'm looking at is directly across the color wheel from the yellow green or the green. We're looking at red or violet, okay, or like orange. Okay, these would be really beautiful colors to add to our painting because the background is green. So if we want the colors to pop, then we would probably want to add something, you know, in that range, the red, the orange. I was leaning towards yellow like sunflowers, but I want y'all opinion. What do y'all think? What colors or do you want a variety of colors? And we can just do like a field of wildflowers. But I don't want the flowers to pull away from the main, like, 
I don't want the flowers to pull away from the main um, subject. And the main subject is the bunny. Okay, so we don't want to add too many flowers and we don't want to overpower our bunny where he's hidden. So I just want you to think about all of that. I'm seeing um, orange. Yep, that's what Kelly Frost said, orange. Variety, Teresa says. Wildflower. Oh, Melanie, you bought a camper. Oh. That's so awesome. A camper? Yeah. Get get you a plain air uh, um, easel. I just bought me one. And the weather is going to be great in the next month, y'all. Get ready because we're going to start doing plain air paintings in Montana. Excited about it. Red, orange, orange, yellow. He could be smelling a flower. Purple. Miss Pat, you... you how did I know you were going to say purple? <laughs> I'm kind of leaning towards that too. Let's do some orangey, reddish, yellow flowers. Don't you think that would be good? Yellows, whites, purples, reds, and oranges. I'm leaning towards the reds and oranges myself. Okay, so I'm going to go there. So I'm going to put some yellow on my palette, which is a cadmium yellow deep hue. Um, I'm going to need to pull some reds because I do not have that out. But I do have this awesome color that I'm going to share with y'all. That's that's a reddish orange already. And where is it? Mm, of course, because I want it, I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, let me show you this color. This is going to be beautiful. So it is called, um, I have two different ones that are, they're a little bit different from one another, but they're very similar. Let me put them out right here so you can see them. This is a um, naphthol red light, and this is a cadmium red light. Now this is a golden. Golden is going to, um, to take a long time to dry. It's a slow drying acrylic, I love them. They're almost like an oil feel to them and they actually kind of sticky and it takes almost like a whole day for them to dry. So they're pretty neat. And I do use those every once in a while. Okay, so look at these colors. See how it's kind of orangey red? All right. Melanie asks, hey, can you use old cigar box to prop painting for small plein air studies? Yeah, I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could. I just bought me a plain air um, easel, and it's like. Oh no, I think she's saying you can use a cigar box to prop up the painting for a small. Yes, yeah, she wasn't asking a question. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. That's a smart idea. Yeah. All right, so I'm making kind of like a little bit more on the yellow side because this is like super, super bright, bright yellow, and I mean orange, and it's like almost too orange for me. So I'm calming it down with some white and some yellow. Look how pretty that is. Let's calm it down a little bit more. Okay, I am not making a flower that we know what it is. Does that make sense? You understand what I'm saying? Now this paint is still wet, so we have to be super, super careful not to, um, you know, start mixing this green up in here. So. Renee Smith says, what's an air easel? A plain air. Okay. So plain air, P-L-E-I-N-A-I-R, is an easel. It's, it's a, a portable easel that you can take outside. Plain air is to when you go, you go outside and you paint the landscape that you're looking at. And you paint from that area. Okay, that's called plain air painting. And um, I am getting into that this spring because we live in Montana. Do y'all see how cute this is? And Montana, and we live in the mountains in Montana. And Montana has some of the most gorgeous views that I have ever seen. So um, we're going to be doing some plain air. Look at this, how pretty. I love it. Do y'all see how I'm just like, I'm just tapping 
and I'm saying, oh, I want a flower right there. That's gorgeous. Oh, I want a flower right here. Oh, let's put a little one right there and right there. And then I'm going to stop because I think I'm done. Isn't he cute? It's, it's not, not even real flat. Like, they're not even shaped like real flowers. Like, I don't know what kind of flowers they are. They're just a bunch of blobs. But they look like flowers, right? Orange does look very nice. Yes. Doesn't that orange look great? Okay. I'm going to ground the bottom just a little bit because I feel like it needs it. I feel like he's like floating in the grass. Do y'all kind of feel that way too? I just feel like he's floating in the grass and not on the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of green <clears throat> and a little bit of white and a little bit of brown, actually. I'm just kind of making my own color. And Elizabeth says, what is the towel that I tell you to use? I think she's talking about the shop towels. So mm -hmm. they're, they're just paper towels? Oh, yeah. Florida? they're That blue. It's a light blue color. It's a it's a it's a more coarse towel than what you buy for like the kitchen. Yeah, it's a shop towel. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm grounding this a little. I'm making him actually like tail mama. Oh yeah, tail, 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 tail. Donna said something named Kathy. Okay, and let me let me come back and add just a little bit. Hang on, I'm fixing him a little bit. Give me a second. Yeah, shop towels are awesome. I'm coming back in here and I'm adding just a little bit of grass back where I had grass because I want him to look like he's sitting on the ground. Cheryl Jen started an hour ago, three o'clock mountain time, which would have been four o'clock central time and five o'clock eastern time. And I'm almost done. We are going to make a super cute little poofy tail and it's going to be white. This will be available for replay on her Facebook page. So you can go back and look at this and see all of our beautiful pets. I hope y'all are having as much fun as we are. We love coming on here and sharing our, our fun with all of y'all. You're, you're welcome, Marty. Okay. And I'm adding just a little bit of fun to her, him, it. The bunny. Sally, the cottontail bunny. Sally. Sally is cute. Look how cute Sally is. I'm going to add just a little bit of brown. Okay. Kathy Dixon says this is adorable. One more thing. And y'all know if you know anything about my type of paintings, I like to add a little bit of rusticness to the edges. So I'm just taking some black. Oh, great idea. Who put that? Pink in the ears. Yes, pink in the ears will, will do awesome. Just a little bit of fun. Thank you, Kathy. And a teeny, teeny, let me get this. Teeny, teeny little bit of pink. This is a really bright pink. I really want more of like a peach color. So I'm going to take that pink. I'm going to add just a teeny bit of orange. Let me show y'all what I'm doing. I'm taking just some pink, some orange, and some white. And I want it to be more of like a peach. See that? Really pretty. Kathy, we're glad you enjoyed this. And this is, this is going to flow a lot better because I actually added some of this orange into this. So it's not going to be like a totally crazy pink color that's going to clash with everything. You know what I'm saying? Perfect. Perfect. So that it kind of pulls in a little bit of that orange that's out here and it makes it blend just a little bit better. So our bunny is close to being done, y'all, and I want to let you know that this has been a super fun painting with all of you. I know I'm still painting and talking at the same time. 
I like that little bit of goldenness I have on my brush right now. So I'm adding it in there. Okay, just one more little touch. All right, so I'm so sorry. I don't know if y'all can see. So what we normally do, and I hope this is okay with all of you, if you, oh, whiskers. Hang on. Whiskers. <laughs> we need whiskers. He can't not have whiskers. I got you, Elizabeth. Whiskers. Okay, so I'm using a really, really thin liner brush. There we go. Got some whiskers. Um, so at the end of our paintings in our tribe and whenever Michael is with us, Michael is what we call our prayer warrior. And Michael leads us in prayer at the end of our painting. So if you would like to stay on, you are welcome to stay on and join us. Otherwise, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Miss Yvette for having me live in your group. It has been a pleasure and you have a great audience. They are super nice. And come on over and follow my page, Jen's Den Art, and come join us live once a week on our New Technique Wednesdays or come in and join the tribe when we're open. Um, we're going to be opening after the pop-up paint party or come on in and join the pop-up paint party for four fun days starting March 22nd to just get a taste of what we're all about. It's $15 to join now. So I think I'm ready, Michael. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 11 and 12. Aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. Now that verse is not to be taken separately all by itself, but there are wonderful things that you can gain from that verse, right? If you want to know what the entire chapter is about, that's First Thessalonians chapter 4. It's a beautiful, beautiful book and a beautiful chapter. And Sharon Dago joined the pop-up paint party today. All right, let's pray, okay? Yeah. All right. Father God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to have to paint with all of our sisters and brothers. We ask, oh God, that you place a hedge of protection around all those that are watching and listening today. And that you would guide them through the week, Lord, giving them strength and encouragement to be bold about you. For it is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And make sure you watch the next artist presenter coming on at 4.30 in the group. Got so y'all enjoy your day. We love you all. We love you guys. Thank Good you. Luck. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Later.